the right. museum was originally uh, half of the Senate chamber in the old Capitol building. When we outgrew the old Capitol, we moved into the third floor of Calvin Hall when it sat in this space that McBride Hall occupies today. Then they rolled that across the street to its present location about 100 years ago and built McBride Hall, and that's when we moved in in 1907. Uh, the Mammal Gallery in Mammal Hall was, was original to that space. That space was built to accommodate that whale. Uh, Laison Island Cyclorama was built within that space. The Bird Gallery, Bird Hall called then now Hedgeback Hall, was built to accommodate that cyclorama. It's the only one in the world and it was a dream come true for a director back then. One of his main objectives of designing this building was to accommodate the dream he had for that exhibit. Uh, many of the animals that you saw in the Mammal Gallery are much older than this building. They go back to the 1870s and 80s. Um, for, for sure, the things are, are, are cracking and drying out and fading. And on the other hand, I always ask people to imagine how they're going to look in 100 years. We're an unusual museum. You can go to a lot of university museums in the Midwest and discover they've got a huge professional staff. Um, you don't find that here. We've got two full-time people running this museum. And uh, the truth is we're not running it at all. We're, we're basically trying to, to administer and uh, coordinate the efforts of a lot of student volunteers and student uh, staff people. Um, it's the students who are running this museum. The collection is extraordinary. Uh, Charles Nutting, our director, our, our fourth director, served here for about 40 years, 100 years ago, went all over the world collecting specimen. Uh, collections from famous collectors contributed to us for the opportunity to display them right here in Iowa City. Of course, then there's our giant sloth. The brilliance of the designers of, of Isle of Hall was to, to, to uh, create these surprises around to every corner. Um, I, I understand the design committee called them, oh wows, that, that they wanted people to simply blurt out, oh wow, when they came around the corner. He's, he's there to inspire all kinds of people to do all kinds of crazy things sometimes with him. He's, he's got a personality. Uh, there's nothing else like him. He's been uh, Santa Claus at Christmas, the Easter Bunny. Uh, my favorite is the Zorro costume that he wears on occasion. He's been a pilgrim. He's been a cherub. Abraham Lincoln on President's Day, he has a graduation cap and gown. Heaven help us, a Lilo and Stitch hula girl, okay, and, um, or, oh, a king, yes, king with a crown. This is, this is the attic. The, uh, we're surrounded by about 12,000 different birds, about 4,000 different mammals. Some of the sloth that we've been digging up, the, uh, the mammals that we display, that we have stored, are, are not all in skins like you see there. Some of them are stored as, rather than in mounts, uh, as in study skins. So these are just the, the skins of the animal. Some of the oldest specimens in the whole university, in the whole museum at least, are, uh, are stored here in uh, old jars. Uh, this is our wet collection, our alcohol collection of amphibians and bats and snakes. Uh, we're surrounded by about 14,000 bird skins. And this is just, this is the skin of the animal. These aren't stuffed. These are red-tailed hawks. It's been 50 years since the museum actually collected any specimens. 
We're just kind of surrounded by the detritus of 150 years of work and display and collecting. Got about, we probably have about 20,000 birds' eggs stored up here. Still trying to document what all of those are. Get them cataloged. The polar bear was noted to us. Hopefully we'll find a, an exhibit case in the mammal gallery big enough to put this guy on display someday. Once upon a time, we had a lot more room for displaying a lot more animals. It's amazing the animals that we've got on, mounted like this, stored behind the scenes. Some of the most incredible birds in the world we've got stored around us, some of the rarest. This is the sloth that we're, we're digging up. I can go over and show you in the lab some of the bones that we're gluing back together again. Some of them are, are nearly perfect. Um, can you guess what that is? Those are the fingers, yeah, yeah. These are, these are my favorite bones. I think working here from the staff or students' point of view is always a labor of love. You gotta be um, passionate about this subject. Biology went off in the direction of microbiology 85, 90 years ago and, and, and left this museum behind. People just didn't see the need for a museum. I, I think the, the pendulum is swinging back now and the environmentalists, the, the people in conservation, are, are looking at, at the school children that are, that are coming out of our school systems and realizing they've got a real good handle on the animals of Australia, the animals of Costa Rica. They've got a real love for, for rainforests, uh, and they don't know a thing about the animals that live here in Iowa. Um, they, they, they'd have no understanding that, that those same miracles of evolution that, they, that they're seeing on TV and on their, their, their nature shows are, are going on right in their own backyards, right under their own noses, and they don't know to watch for them, that there's any number of evolutionary miracles going on. If they just understand a little bit better, see it a little bit better, um, the state's going to be a lot better off. We'll, we'll protect the, the land a little bit better once people learn to appreciate it a little bit more. There's a reason why we put the sloth right next to an ancient Indian, a paleo Indian, and, and that was to get people to understand that, that sloths aren't animals that were alive millions and millions of years ago, but just 10 or 11,000 years ago. That, that there's no reason at all why you, when you're driving home at night that I mean, you should be passing herds of elephants. They were there 10,000 years ago. When you wake up tomorrow morning and open up the curtains, there should be a sloth in the trees in your backyard. Um, this isn't, these aren't animals from millions of years ago. They're, 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 they're animals that were there just 10,000 years ago. Um, I really hope we can get that message, I hope we're getting that message across in that exhibit upstairs, that, that, this, that this state was much different not too long ago, and we don't have a clue about why these animals disappeared. Um, the, the other big wow, the other big lesson in Iowa Hall, I think, is over in the ecology corner. Um, if, if we can get people to understand how much the how much the land has changed in the last, especially the last 150 years, um, that Iowa Hall is all about change. But but we've we've been managing change in a big way in the last 150 years since we've got here. Um, a lot of debate in the state about whether those changes are good or not. Um, 
I, I like thinking we've just, we've introduced a different kind of nature in our agriculture here. The, the, the challenge is to figure out how to go on sharing it with all that wildlife out there. designers we have a footprint of a abominable snowman okay oh, that's it okay yeah yeah it's unbelievable there's no data on it we don't know how we don't know where it was found okay. We're kind of a blank slate. There's so much that needs to get done around here. There's so much we can do with the extensive collection that we've got behind the scenes and up in the attic. And, and, and they're just they're tools for students to use who, who can think of creative ways of using them. Um, it, again, in, in any other museum, it, it would be the professional staff calling the shots, and, and that's not true here. We're just so desperate for help. There's so much that needs to get done, and, and Joe or Josephine student, anybody with a little ambition, um, you know, we're, we're not in the, we're, we're not in the um, position of saying no to anybody. Um, come to us with a good idea about what you want to do, and, and invariably you'll, you'll hear us say yes. Do it. Thank <laughs> you. 